Good morning, Royal Signet. I hope you all are doing well and are safe. And it's such a joy to be in the presence of God. And I hope you all have gathered together with your family to worship this God this morning. And I'm so blessed to be here. Um, and I'm just grateful for God and everything that He's doing. Amen. Um, let's let's read from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 43, verses 16 uh, to 19. Yeah. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up and you do not perceive it. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. How many of you believe this morning that God is making a way in your wilderness? Amen. So let's look to the Lord in prayer and let's say, God, yes, sometimes we fail to perceive it. But today as we worship, today as we come together as a family, as a church, that we will begin to declare that He is the way maker. No matter what you're facing today, no matter where we are at in life, no matter what impossible situation is ahead of us this morning, I want to declare to my circumstances, I want to declare in my life that He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker and that is who he is. Amen. Church, do you believe that with me? Do you believe that with me this morning? Oh God, we thank you for this beautiful morning, Jesus. Father, we surrender everything we are to you and we declare that you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. And we believe with all our heart, Lord Jesus, with all our hearts, that Lord, you are in the move and you are working, Lord Father. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't understand it, you are working behind the scenes, oh Father God. So I pray today, Father, that assurance, that hope will fill our hearts, even as we worship you this morning. Come and inhabit the praises of your people, God, no matter where we are watching from, no matter where we are at, Lord Father, even as we come together as a family, as a church, that your presence invade our living rooms, that your presence invade our homes, oh Father God, our cars, oh Lord Jesus, and would you come and take over father god we give ourselves away to you today to come and have your way jesus come and have your way father because that is who you are that is who you are jesus and we love you this morning god we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise we love you jesus in jesus name we pray and the church said amen amen
even better to see it you working even better to feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working i am blessed i am called i am healed i am whole i am saved in jesus name
Your name. 
one that's worthy of our praise this morning, church. He's the only one that's worthy of our worship this morning. And there is no one like him, and there is no one like him that's holy. There's no one like him. So can we sing that for one last time? Worthy is your name. surrender to this name that is name above every other name I thank you God for meeting us this morning thank you for healing our hearts thank you for filling our hearts with hope thank you for filling our hearts with praise this morning Father we surrender ourselves into your loving hands we give the rest of the service into your hands even as we prepare to listen to your word, God. Let our hearts be aligned, oh God. Let our ears be open. Let our hearts be open to receive from you, Jesus. Speak to us, we pray. We thank you, God, for this day. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Hello Church, ready for the word? We had an amazing time of worship with the church band. I really praise God for our church band. And I really thank the church uh, for giving me this opportunity and God Almighty for giving this opportunity to worship God and to actually get the word to the church. Before we begin, uh, I want to start with a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes and start with a word of prayer. Father God, for this beautiful time, Lord, speak to us. Lord, give us clarity of thoughts. Lord, remove all the distraction. Take complete control of the next 20, 25 minutes what we want to speak, oh God. Let your power take control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am going to speak about very foundational and a basic topic, yet very essential for Christian life. We are called Christians. If this is derived from two words, Christ and Ian. Christ meaning anointed one or the Lord, and Ian means follower. So we are the follower of Jesus Christ. The greatest revelation of God is Jesus Christ. So, in that context, if we see that, then getting the revelation of Jesus Christ is the most important thing for a Christian life. Or basically, uh, telling in a simple terms is knowing God. So, yes, my topic, my sermon for the next 20 25 minutes would be about. Uh, knowing God. Jesus is the greatest revelation of God. So it's very important to know who God is or who Christ is. If you don't know, we will be like a footballer who does not know to play football. A 
probably a pilot who does not know to fly a plane. So as a Christian, it's very important that we know who God is. So as a Christian, it should be our greatest pursuit of our lives to know Him or know Christ. So it's the most important part of Christianity is to know Him throughout our life, to search Him more. If you ask me, you know, what is the importance of knowing God or why we need to know God? I would uh, give you a Bible reference for this. Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. This is what it says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom or the strong boast of their strength or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boast boast about this that they may understand to know me that I am the Lord who exercise kindness, justice and righteousness on the earth. For in this I delight, declares the Lord. Very clear text. If you see in this world, everyone, everyone would boast about uh, their riches, the car that they own, the house that they have, people that they know. But if we see that, what does the scripture say? He says, you should boast on the Lord and knowing God. So that is in what God delights. So it's very important as a Christian that we need to delight on God or knowing God. It speaks about the attributes of God in that scripture. It says, the Lord who exercises kindness, justice and righteousness. So those are the attributes of God. Adding to that, if we see the Old Testament, we would see many attributes. In the life of Moses, if you see, or in the life of Abraham, if you see, he's a covenant keeping God. God made Israel into nation through Abraham. He's also known as redeeming God as he delivered his people out of slavery in Egypt. He's also a holy God. He gave 10 commandments on Mount Sinai. He's also known as merciful God because he made a providence of sacrifice when they failed to keep the commandments to be then atonement. He made a providence. He's also a loving God. If we come to the New Testament, he said he gave his only begotten son he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He is also merciful. He is kind. He is righteous. He is just. And the attributes are n numbers. And that we need to look into the scriptures. We need to read the word of God and find the attributes and really meditate on the attributes of God. Very important to know who God is. Just knowing the attributes will not suffice. We need to know the will of God. As it says in Ephesians 5 verses 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And if you will question me, what, does, what is God's will? God's will is that none perish, but everyone should have everlasting life or eternal life. So the ultimate purpose of every Christian is that he may take the gospel to every, every nation and preach it to everyone. So it is eternal life. We need to, so the ultimate purpose of our life is eternal life. It may be in our life or the people that we know. And to define what eternal life is, if you take John chapter 17 verses 3, 
he says this is eternal life that they may know you the, the the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent eternal life is not an a infinity time in a place we will all get bored of a single place because it's so limited we say heaven has pearl uh, streets of pearl and gold if if it if it if if is the case we'll get bored with the place because it's so finite but what is eternity eternity is knowing god and we will have new revelation of god every day that would turn that would make it eternity because we will never phantom god so it would take eternity to understand so we will basically we will never come to know the true revelation of god we would be it would be so glorious and it will burst into the glory of god every time when we knew, know god in a new way so that is what eternity is it's the the knowledge of god or knowing god so that takes me to the ultimate purpose that we ought to look forward for this a uh, man of god who said stamp eternity on my eyeball so anything that we do anything we challenge ourselves with we need to focus with that view it should glorify god now next is the benefits of knowing god there are n numbers of benefits of god but i would just mention the four great benefits of knowing god first understanding in proverbs 9 verses 10 it says we all know by heart you know we from probably from our childhood have learned it, it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy one is understanding we all want to be wise wise in our finances wise with dealing with other people wise in a career you want to be wise in money but what does the bible says it says the knowledge of the holy one is wisdom or understanding so we want to we have great understanding only if we know god so that is one great benefit you will you can apply it those word of god or through the experience that is in the bible and put it in any spheres of life that would give you wisdom or that would give you understanding the next benefits of knowing god is trust of faith in psalms chapter 9 verses 10 it says and those who know your name will put their trust in you for you o lord have not forsaken those who seek you so those that trust him they will have impossible faith there is a man of god called george muller he's got his orphanage not away from here in bristol he fed 10000 orphans he was an itinerary speaker he traveled around the globe i think he did 50 countries in the last two years of his life on a continuous voyage then you would argue that he would have a great team you would think that he is a uh, he's he's got a large advertising team people there are a lot of people who is raising fund for him no you are completely mistaken this man of god completely trusted the word he took word as it is he called he he trusted the promises of god he said jahova jaira god will provide if he took the word as it is and you would you will be surprised he didn't even take a salary but trusted god 
he made all his request to god i have read out of his 50000 prayer request 40000 prayer request was answered the same day or the next such powerful testimony and i have i've also read that when he died whole of the london street was stopped on his funeral that was his impact on the generation so they those people who know god will have impossible trust and faith on god next benefit is we'll have spiritual strength in daniel chapter 11 verses 32 the second part says the people who know their god will display strength and will take action there is a great man of god called william carey he said expect great thing from god attempt great thing for god he was a missionary to india he came to west bengal he was one of the person who abolished sati he started many schools in india he also translated the word of god the bible into many vernacular languages in india so many so much he could attain for god he was not a very learned man he hardly had any grades but he expected great thing from god and he attempted great thing for god he took action he jumped when there was an altar call for missionary to go to india he was the first person who said i will go that was his passion he took that action and that's why he is written in the history books of christianity about his great strength spiritual strength the next benefit of knowing god is perseverance second timothy chapter 1 verses 12 says for this reason i also suffer these things but i am not ashamed for i know whom i believe and i'm convinced that he is able to guard what i have entrusted to him until that day this is paul writing and if you see paul's life he was such an affluent person he was so rich and when he encountered christ you see he lost his position he lost all his riches he was beaten he was in jail he suffered everything just because he knew god he had perseverance to go through such trials just because he knew god he had a personal encounter with god there's also a great man of god around 65 years ago he went as a missionary to ukeda he preached the gospel to the tribal community in ukeda he suffered so much he learned their language he ate their food he traveled in difficult terrains just to reach the unreach and one point he happened to actually he was killed by those natives with arrow how you would think he was such a young guy he was 30 years he was married and i think his wife was just pregnant leaving all that he had the heart to preach the gospel to the unreached and those you uh, the people the tribal people of ukeda received the word only through him so they suffered so much just because they knew god isn't it amazing what benefit it is to know god 
just a quick recap of the benefits of knowing God. You will have understanding. You will be wise. You will have faith. You will have spiritual strength. And you will have perseverance. The flip side of not knowing God now. We need to think both sides. There is a great danger in not knowing God. Firstly, we will have false worship as it is written in John 4.22. We all know about the Samaritan woman. She worshipped the well. They, he, she thought, I mean, worshipping the creator. She forgot and she started worshipping the well. That is the danger of not knowing God. Also in Psalms 50, 21, this thing you have done, I have kept silent. You thought I was just like you. I will reprove you and state the case in order before your eyes. So one of the judgment of God is God becomes silent. You see, there is so much of chaos around us. Things are going haphazard. Abortion is made legal. There is so much chaos. And God is silent. That's one of God's judgment. We will also make God of our making. We will start worshipping images. And many a times we think this is for the unbelievers. Those who do not know God. But this is for the believers as well. We'll start worshipping our children. We'll start worshipping our idols would be our wife, our job, our careers, a car. We'll give the worship to those things. We'll make God of our own making. That's great danger if you don't know our God. Another danger of not knowing God, apathetic view of sin. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 34. Become sober-minded as you ought and stop sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We'll have casual view of sin. Just for an illustration, I give you the perils of sin. In the North Pole, in the sea, there are dead eagles inside the sea, frozen. And the scientists, they thought, how is this possible? And they did some observation. And what they found was this eagle flying up in the sky, sees the fish in the sea, gets very hungry, comes down and hits the salmon. And salmon is so heavy, so he cannot lift. So it's easy just to leave it and fly off. But because it loves it so much, keeps holding and the weight of that fish drowns in and they are dead. That is the peril of sin. We'll, we know it's dangerous, but we'll have the grab on it and probably the end is destruction. That is the danger of not knowing God. We'll also become lawless as it is written in Judges chapter 17 verses 6 those days there was no king they did what was right in their eye I mean for them it was the right thing what they do don't we do sometimes we make our own calculations we make those way out to sin we give excuses that's the danger of not doing God 
finally there's a divine judgment and destruction so it's mentioned in hosea chapter 4 what do you know what is that generation would get lost children children would get lost you see the churches here are closed are sold they are empty once upon a time they were so passionate to serve god many missionaries went out of from this church and if you see now there are so many empty churches it should ring a bell in our ears it should set an alarm for us that it can happen what would happen to our next generation if we don't know god so we need to reverently search and know who god is so you ask me how do i know god if you turn your chapter to psalms 105 verses 4 and 5 seek the lord and his strength seek his presence continually remember the wondrous work that he has done his miracles and the judgment he uttered it is by seeking the lord and his strength we would know god and the very 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 important word in this passage It says remember the wondrous work that he has done you know you see moses built an altar of stone when god delivered them from the egyptians there was a passover also in remembrance so it's a very important part to remember what god has done and one of my one of the habit of my beloved wife is journaling she would write prayer request and the praise report in her diary and i would encourage every royal signet member to do that it's really helpful we just need to flip up pages because as humans we ought to forget we'll forget like we'll probably remember for a short period but if you don't write it down you there is a great chance that you'll forget one example personally i came to this country 2 years ago and my wife was persistently telling come over it's god's will that we need to be together as a family but i was as a man i am very calculative i started calculating things and it's not falling in the safe part i've got so much of load i've got so much of responsibility help our parents and with my calculation i could not take the step but at the end we decided to honor god i had ilts score which was not enough for me to get a nursing job so what i did was i i, I kept keep keep on giving ilts almost 7 8 times and i and happened to get the same score every time and what happened was later i really gave up but my wife she reminded me from the word she told me if we honor god god will take care of the rest so with the little faith without all disappointment i i thought okay let me try this because i tried my best i walked in to this country and the day when we decided and i stepped into the this country god changed the rule for the ilts for the nursing job and i had that score a year ago 
so i i was just thinking if i would have honored god then in a year ago probably i don't have to wait so long god changed the rules of ilts for me i believe but in course of time within 2 years i started giving justification like lot of my friends came over as well and i was like okay it's not a very it's an easy test that's the excuse like in my mind so but i know no i i'm really confessing this in the front of church but yeah it's if i have written it was an impossible task but god made that wondrous work for me so i personally want to really write it down in my diary and i am also starting starting to journal now so we have so much at the end of life we would probably have so much to glorify god but we if we limit god with our experience we limit god so much we need to look for the historical evidence in the bible as well and those are wonderful that's beyond our personal experience we cannot limit god with that for example if you see in second kings 1 lakh 80 85000 soldiers was struck down by the angel the syrian nowhere in the world is mentioned this is how wonderful our god is he that is his wondrous work see his creation that is his wondrous work see the galaxies that's his wonderful work so those are all that we need to tremble how powerful our god is not only our personal experience are good but we need to see god in nature we need to see god in everything that we do this is how you would see god see god by prayer and reading the scripture you will find so much of encounters the god is magnified it's a very easily said but seldomly done you know what is the greatest regrets for me in my life i have not prayed enough and i have ne- not read the bible enough and it's my desire and it's it's also a regret that i never happened to read bible from cover to cover but it's my desire to read his word and keep it close and we have believers we have people around us who help us to read there is a group in our church who have made they, they they take so much of effort to send out word the chapter that we read that we read the bible in a year i really encourage everyone to take word of god seriously take prayer life seriously we all of us most of us take knowing god as an encounter we think it's like the immunization like the vaccination when we were saved we we knew god and that's enough but it should be like the ventilate the guy on the ventilator who needs every second the moment you take him off came over is dead that is the longing that should be the pursuit of us that is the level that we need to read the word and pray both are important if we have one thing we are doing one thing then we'll get pride in us because the word of god will always keep us rooted so it's my humble request that take word of god very seriously and knowing god should be a pursuit should be a pursuit of life our for christian life may god bless you all with the word you guys have a great week ahead reminded that you pray and read the word let's close in prayer 
thank you father god for this beautiful time we humble ourselves oh lord thank you for speaking to us lord we pray that our hearts may turn to you oh lord we repent from our wicked ways and we take the word of god as it is oh lord we want to know you more oh lord let it be a pursuit of our lives oh lord. thank you dear daddy for allowing us to speak in jesus name we pray amen hope you have a very good week let's say the benediction prayer together now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful he will surely do it may the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all always amen god bless you have a wonderful week Take care.